So what's going on, guys? It's your boy Nishra here, and there is a lot that's going to go wrong once Infinite Forbidden hits the TCG. Snake Eye is going to be at maximum power with Millennium, Fiend Smith, Beatrice Lines into Promethean Princess that basically give them so many starters, so many ways to actually start their turn that it's insane. Um, effectively making the Tier Zero deck stronger. Um, Ten Pi gets their turn skip and they get two extra starters. So that means that they get to play going first on top of going second, which they already do pretty well, right? Better than most decks. Gimmick Puppet FTK gets to come out and wreak havoc on Nationals, potentially sacking people out of game wins or games as a whole. Time is going to be a bitch and there's going to be a lot of things that Gimmick Puppet does that does not make it easy to counterplay or beat the deck unless you're on something like Shifter or Droll. But it's very likely that if they draw the right starters and the right um, the right pieces, that they can sack you really hard um, and inflict over 8,000 in the first turn. Gimmick Puppet is going to be real. It's going to be really annoying. I don't think it's going to take the whole event, but I think if enough people play it, there's it's going to be really sacky. The very last pillar I think that's a big deal for Nationals is actually U-Bell with Fiend Smith. And now that we know that Moon of the Close Sky is coming in Infinite Forbidden on top of the new Maxi, on top of the Fiend Smith, on top of the Millennium, it's basically one big format reset. This is like the next level of power creep for Yu-Gi-Oh! And you can either get used to it or you can take a step back and say maybe the game isn't for me i kind of want to show some combos that i saw on twitter because ubell has been doing a lot better since Bar dross came out and since nightmare throne came out grave squirmer um it's given the deck a lot of utility and it's been a pretty decent rogue deck up to this point you know access to super poly and a, and a bunch of other things within the engine that make it really that make it a really unique deck. Now with the existence of Phantom of Ubell, one of the best monster negates in the game. And it doesn't really negate, it doesn't actually affect the monster that it's negating, which is pretty cool. Um, so it has a lot of plays around stuff and it has synergy with um, Unchained because it can uh, work really well with the destruction effects of Unchained and uh, the entire deck is Fiend, so you can make Yama really easily. And so there's just so many little things. And once you add the Fiendsmith engine into there, there's just so much nonsense that the deck can do. So I wanted to give you guys a showcase of what uh, of how much stronger Ubell becomes with the Fiendsmith. I know I haven't covered Ubell on, on the channel yet, and that's because there's so many ways to play the deck. I, I just it, it would have taken me so much time to cover all of it. They have Shavara, Imperm, Nightmare Throne, Yubel. I decided just not to go through with uh, making a Yubel video, but the deck is going to be meta enough where you can learn how to play the deck from other creators. So it does. So I don't have to like I don't feel obligated to teach or to to make a video of it because I feel like there's already enough information out there for you guys to play Yubel effectively. So now this is going to show you how to play Yubel post Infinite Forbidden, and so this is a, a Japanese player. Um, or OCG player, YouTuber as well, show their profile YouTube channel, Yusha Pamo. AK subs, I, you know, because it's an OCG channel, I have no idea what kind of content that they make, but it, it seems to be very nice and it seems to be TCG based or OCG based, I guess I should say. It doesn't seem to be like Master Duel or anything, so that's pretty cool. They seem to make a lot of good like combo videos and guides and stuff. I think this might have been the same person who posted the TG combo video all that time back. Oh, they even got a Gay Guardian one here. That's pretty cool. They're on Prisma though. Prisma's lame. They got Goblin Biker. That's nice. So yeah, they they, they definitely got a lot of sauce here. It seems like uh, this could be a good channel for the future. Oh yeah, this is the channel that posted the TG video. I think I might I may have borrowed a combo or two from this TG video as well. So you know what? I'm gonna hit that subscribe and maybe you should too if if you're interested in learning about some of these decks. So let's go into uh this first U Bell Fiendsmith combo. Uh so it starts with Samsara and then uh it gets into the spirit of U Bell to uh again to Nightmare Pain. 
Nightmare Pain, pop U-Bell, get Grave Squirmer, uh, spare a U-Bell triggers to summon out U-Bell from deck. Uh, Grave Squirmer can then uh, summon itself. Summon conditions have been met. And you have the option to pop U-Bell. You don't have to, but it seems like you're choosing to pop U-Bell uh, and you summon off the Terror Incarnate. Uh, now you can shuffle back regular U-Bell and Samsara to make Phantom of U-Bell, and this makes the combo Nib safe uh, because you went um, Samsara, this is two, this three, that's four. Actually, no, because that's, that's one, two, three, four, five, actually. You could get hit with Nib here. Actually, never mind. Yeah. So so you could get hit with a nib before you went for Phantom of U Bell. But uh okay. So assuming that there's no nib. Oop. I turn this volume down. You make Yama. Yama gets you Shivara. And then you can use Grave Squimmer to revive your Spirit of U Bell. Shivara can then pop the Spirit of U Bell summon itself. Spirit can then trigger because it's not a hard once per turn. Summoning out the regular U Bell again. Now we go into Muna to Close Sky. So this is, you know, the Link 2 that's coming in uh, Infinite Forbidden here in TCG. Um, it was a V-Jump promo over there in OCG. So we, we didn't know when we were going to get it. We were assuming it was going to be Battles of Legend. But because it didn't come in Battles of Legend with, with a lot of promos missing from Battles of Legend and a lot of um, Sky Striker cards and OCG cards um, or OCG exclusive cards missing from Battles of Legend, um, I guess we can kind of say for for sure that a lot of this stuff is going to start coming in like main sets uh, between like now and next year. So we make the moon of the close guy and then Shavar is going to trigger as well. So we get to set the trap. So we get to make the Fiendsmith Link 1. And the only thing you really need to know about the Fiendsmith Link 1 is that it tributes itself to summon out the Fiendsmith from the deck. Basically any light fiend monster turns into the Fiendsmith Link 1, which is why Moon of the Close Guy was able to turn into the Fiendsmith Link 1. And the Link 1 is basically a lone fire for the Fiendsmith. So this is the Fiendsmith, you know, he's, uh, you know, uh, Dante from Devil May Cry. Um, so yeah, now we get to shuffle back the um, Terror Incarnate and regular U-Bell to go into another Phantom of U-Bell. And now uh, we can link off Phantom plus the Fiendsmith to go into the Fiendsmith Link 2. The Fiendsmith Link 2 can shuffle back monsters from your grave to fusion summon a Fiendsmith fusion monster. And so this one is a level 6 Fiendsmith fusion monster. And so it gets to... We get to add back the Fiendsmith and then the Fiendsmith from hand can discard itself to add the Fiendsmith Tractus, which is the searcher spell from the, uh, for the deck. And then Tractus... Can, uh, can activate to add a light fiend from your deck to your hand and then discard one card as part of the effect. So you add the, the Fabled Lurry and then you discard the Fabled Lurry and then Lurry is able to trigger because it was discarded by a card effect to summon itself out. And you can link those two into Unchained Soul of Rage. From there, you can shuffle back any light fiend from your graveyard back into deck to special summon the Fiendsmith from the graveyard, right? Like this is the third time that we've touched this card. <laughs> And so we can link, oh no, not, not link, excuse me. We can banish the Tractus, I believe, to Fusion Summon. And we're Fusion Summoning the bigger Fiendsmith Fusion Monster. And so it gets to equip, I don't know if it gets to equip or if the Link Monsters themselves equip to the Fiendsmith Fusion. But basically, while it's equipped with uh, Fiendsmith Monsters, it gets to negate the effects of face-up cards on the field equal to the number of Link Arrows. And it's that it has equipped to it. If it were to activate its effect right now, it would be able to negate two face-up cards on field because it has two link arrows um, in its equip spell zone is how I believe the card works. And so that basically allows you to play through Dark Ruin no more because you have the, um, the Unchained Trap card. So if they activate Dark Ruler, you activate the Unchained Trap as Chain Link 2. And then at any point in, and then at any other point in the chain after, because you responded with the um, Unchained Trap card, you can then use the Fiendsmith Fusion Monster to negate the Dark Ruler so that you, so that you're not losing out 
and the nightmare pain i believe forces them or you get to choose the uh, attack target of your opponent's monsters and so you can force them to attack phantom of Ubel, where they will take all the damage from the battles um and then if they have if they summon something too strong you can swallow it with unchained soul of rage you can make potentially a sp little knight i don't believe your fiend lock like it, it just has to be a dark link monster for soul of rage so i do believe you can make sp off of it or you can make nightmare unicorn if that's also your thing and this whole setup this is uh like one two three four interruptions uh plus like yama engrave and plus like a forced battle situation where it's like this is all off of one card so the fact that like this is just one a one card line it's a four interruptions is pretty good but it doesn't stop there so there's another combo line that starts with the nightmare throne rather than starting with the samsara lotus Ooh, gotta turn this down i don't know what uh anime music they got going on here <laughs> and uh you know don't want to get copyrighted so they activate nightmare throne get samsara samsara goes into spirit of Ubel, nightmare pain activate nightmare pain to pop the spirit of Ubel's. uh get grave squirmer spirit of Ubel, summon out regular Ubel, and that also triggers uh the nightmare throne as well so basically you get to summon both Ubel and the terror incarnate at the same time we're gonna link those off to go into moon the clothes guy and then we get to shuffle back uh regular Ubel plus terror incarnate to, to go into phantom and so this one should be nib safe right because that's one, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh, fuck. Well, they could get rid of the moon of the close guy. Yeah, I mean, they could nib you before the moon, like when you're summoning the moon of the close guy. But you do have access to Phantom of you, Bell. If you really wanted to, which it would be minus. But you could shuffle back the U-Bell here, like shuffle back U-Bell plus the Samsara engrave here, since uh, this is still summon number four, uh, to make Phantom of U-Bell, and then summon out Grave Squirmer, link Grave Squirmer and Terra Incarnate off to make Moon of the Close Guy, and that could make you nib safe, but potentially a lower ceiling. So that's kind of like the, the concession that you might have to make. So shuffle these two back. Or put him back back at the bottom of the deck. I don't I don't know if it's shuffle or put it back at the bottom, but I don't really think it matters. So we go Fiendsmith line again. Uh, Grave Scormer, link those two off into uh, Fiendsmith link two. Link two, shuffle back the two links to make the level six fusion. Level six fusion, add back Fiendsmith. Fiendsmith, add Tractus. Tractus, add Lurie. Discard Lurie. Lurie, uh, summon itself. Link off Lurie plus the other Fiendsmith to make uh, Yama. Now we're going to link off Yama plus the uh, level 6 to make uh, Soul of Rage. We're going to banish Grave Squirmer to bring back Spirit of Ubel. Shavara pop Spirit, summon itself out, Spirit Trigger, um, and trigger Yama at the same time too. Okay, since Spirit was destroyed with a card effect, Yama can actually revive the Spirit of Ubel here. Um, and then uh, Spirit of Ubel summons Ubel, Yama summons Spirit. Now we get to uh shuffle back our fusion summon back the fiendsmith from the graveyard overlay fiendsmith and shavar into wave king caesar overlay into varu dross and now with nightmare throne we're sitting on five interruptions since wave king caesar gets to negate a card that summons twice and uh we also we're a little more susceptible to dark ruler but i but our front row is more balanced against all kinds of interruption or all other kinds of interruption because you know Varjoss is a generic omni and then it can also choose to detach an action material to pop another card on field if they have like a generic engine card on field that like is a continuous spell or something then you can also choose to pop it as part of Varjoss's effect so you can negate something and then pop something else again a soul of soul of rage being able to link off with your opponent's special summon monsters is just way too strong caesar double interruption and then phantom being being what it is is already pretty great so it's a really solid board and again it's all off of just one nightmare throne it's susceptible to nib the way that it was done in the combo but there are ways to play around nibiru which i think is important to recognize that Hand traps are not like a one-stop solution to this deck. So someone posted this in Farfus comments. So 
basically it's going to show another version of the combo. We're going to Nightmare Throne uh, Samsara. Samsara gets Spirit of Yubel. Now that we're on DB, I, you know, like we can read through all the cards. The, yeah, so yeah, the popping to summon Yubel is not a hard once per turn because it's only the following effects that are once per turn. So it's only on summon or it's battle or it's hand trap battle effect uh, that is a hard once per turn, right? Which we already knew that, right? We're getting Spirit of Yubel to summon Yubel and we're getting Nightmare Throne to summon out Terra Incarnate because uh, once per turn, if a face up Yubel monsters you control leaves the field by a card effect, you can eat, you can add to your hand one Yubel monster from your deck, graveyard, or banishment whose original level is one level higher or lower than one of those monsters. Then you can special summon it, ignoring its summon conditions. Okay, so this is what's grabbing Terror Incarnate, funnily enough. Because Spirit of Yubel is being destroyed, you, you need to add a monster that's either one level higher or lower. So you, you need to add a level 11, which makes Terror Incarnate the perfect target to summon off of Nightmare Throne. It's free, and it summons it from anywhere. Deck rape. Yeah, from your deck, graveyard, or banishment. As long as it's not in your hand, I guess, then you should be fine. Oh, this only triggers when it's destroyed. I thought this is just this is just when it leaves. I, I thought it was just when it leaves the field, unless I'm confusing it. Yeah, I was confusing it with terror. Okay, because it's because it's when terror leaves the field that it sums out ultimate nightmare. But nobody plays ultimate nightmare anymore. If I'm being honest, I don't even think you needed ultimate nightmare before the second uh, before this new level support came out. U Bell needs to be destroyed. Terror incarnate is when it leaves the field. So that's that's the one thing I was getting confused. So now we're going to shuffle back Spirit of Yubel plus uh, Samsara. So I think that was a misplay in the last two replays to go into Phantom of Yubel after Moon of the Close Guy. I think that's because you, then you're susceptible to, to Nibiru. But by going into Phantom of Yubel before you go into Moon of the Close Guy, because this is summon number five, you do not lose to Nibiru. And now we get to go Yama. Yama's going to add Shivara. Now we get to go Grave Scormer. Right, so Grave, Grave Skirmer is if you control a fiend monster, you can summon it from hand. Then you can destroy one Yubel monster or one monster that mentions it in your monster zone. And then you can banish it from your graveyard, summon a fiend with zero attack from your hand or graveyard, except another copy of itself. Um, all right, so we're going to Moon of the Close Guy. Moon of the Close Guys make makes Fiendsmith Requiem, right? And Requiem is made using any light fiend monster. So that can be Archfiend Eccentric, that can be Moon of the Close Guy. I know some people are using the Dust On uh, with like Draco Net. Um, but this being a generic Link 2 makes this a line that basically any deck can play if they have the space uh, to play like five extra cards with like Lurie, Tractus, and like the Fiendsmith. So Requiem, uh, during the main phase, you can trigger this card, special summon one Fiendsmith monster from your hand or deck. Um, and then while it's in graveyard, you can target one non-link light fiend monster control, equip this card from your field from your field or graveyard to that monster as a close ball that gives a 600 attack. Okay. Um, so it has to be a non-link. So that's that's fine, I guess. Alright, so we're going to tribute it to summon out the Fiendsmith, and then we're gonna banish our Grave Scormer to summon out a monster with zero attack. Uh, we're gonna go for U Bell. So, and then we're by popping Yubel, we get to go for Shibara. Um, so Yubel is gonna trigger to re revive the Terror Incarnate, and then they're gonna trigger Yama as well here to summon back the Yubel that was uh, that was destroyed. So now we're gonna link off into Soul of Rage since uh, Shivara is an unchained soul monster. And so that's gonna get us uh, Shivara trigger to set the trap card from the deck. And then now we're going to link off the Fiendsmith plus Sequentia. I mean, uh, the, the, the Fiendsmith plus uh, Soul of Rage to go into into Fiendsmith Sequentia. And then we're going to go uh, Sequentia's effect. is During your main phase, you can fusion someone one Fiend monster from your extra deck by shuffling his materials from your graveyard into the deck. So um, it's shuffled back the Fiendsmith plus two Light Fiend monsters to make the Fiendsmith dies Iray. And this is the one that uh, that was that I was talking about before where it, it can negate the effects of, of a number of face-up cards on the field equal to the number of Link ratings of the Link monsters equipped to this card until the end of the turn. So that's how you're going to be negating Dark Ruler um, if you play your turn right. 
And then we're linking off Sequentia plus Ubel. Plus Phantom of Ubel to make a three material Apo. And then you can shuffle back uh, a Ubel plus a zero attack monster to make a second Phantom. You're sitting on a Desiree equipped with Sequentia. Um, so basically it gets to negate two face-up cards on the field at once. Uh, you're also getting to uh, to go Apple here with three negates. You still have a Phantom. So that is five interruptions plus Abominable Chamber. Able to summon back our Soul of Rage. And Soul of Rage being able to link off with with any monster, right? Because uh, it can target special summon monster your opponent controls immediately after this effect resolves. Link summon any Dark Link monster, right? So that includes SP Little Knight. So basically, you're, you you get to remove a special summon monster from their field and then go SP and then banish any card in their field or graveyard um, if Soul of Rage does get to resolve, which is just really strong. So you're looking at uh, not just five, six, but seven interruptions here. Uh, if you count the Rage and the SP uh, from the trap card. Now, the cool thing about this array is that it targets up to the total of Link rating, so it doesn't have to target two cards, but it but it can target up to two cards, uh, which is cool, right? So if they activate Dark Ruler, you don't have to negate a second card on field. Like, you don't have to negate your Nightmare Throne or Nightmare Pain or something. You can just negate the Dark Ruler no more and be perfectly fine. And this is why you Bell Fiendsmith. I've just showed you three different one card lines. And this and this third one is nib safe and ends on, you know, potentially seven interruptions, depending on, on, on how their turn is played. Um, and the option to negate spells and traps with uh, dice array is insane. You know, fucking nigga pulls out his devil, his devil trigger. And now the the board state is practically like untouchable and if you leave any monsters in the attack position you are forced to attack into the phantom of Ubel, uh which i don't believe uh yeah i don't believe it, like th this isn't like the loving defender forever where um you'll get punished for attacking into it like you won't just take damage or you, you you'll just take damage by attacking phantom of Ubel. it's not like loving defender where it gets to banish a card after you take damage but uh yeah so that's been fiendsmith ubel um the deck's insane and this is going to be legal for nationals i don't have a deck list because neither of these were my combos or were my um sauce so what do you guys think it's going to do well at nationals what do you guys think is uh do you, do you guys think Fiendsmith Ubel is better than Snake Eye? Do you think do you think this deck has a chance against Snake Eye? Or do you, do you think Snake Eye is like still the superior deck by a lot of other metrics? Um, let me know in the comment section below. This has been your boy Nisha here, signing out.